What do you call the person who paints the symbol on Superman's back? An escape artist? Welcome to Comic Book Editions Volume 201. I felt like starting out today's video with something that I showed this past weekend on Fanboys Live in the Retro Review. But just in case you missed it, let's go back and revisit this again. This is one of the new Burger King toys that they're giving out. They have DC Comics toys, and I got Superman. Of course, I'm looking for Wonder Woman, and their Supergirl figure was pretty awesome too. But according to the Burger King in my area, they haven't seen those yet. They've only seen Batman and Superman. They were out of Batmans, but I did stock up on a Superman. And these are so much bigger than I thought they would be. They come in at over three and a half inches tall. Can't wait to hopefully get the Wonder Woman and the Supergirl one, too, for my collection. But I thought it was pretty awesome, and even though I shared it already on Fanboys this past weekend, I wanted to share it again. How are you doing? Thanks for stopping by today's video, where we'll be unboxing... I'm calling it an A-OK -okay from my friend Silver Haired Bronze Age Babe. Let me explain a little bit more. A couple weeks ago, she posted that she was thinning the collection thinning out the herd a little bit, getting rid of some comic books, and she had some stuff for sale. And then a week later, she did an update video. And I thought, okay, I gave people a week to see if there was anything that they wanted. I got to see if there's any, if, if what I'm interested in, if she has left. And she did have several of them left and made me such an incredible deal that I consider it more an A-OK -okay than an actual purchase. So I do know, in full transparency, what's inside of these boxes. You're going to see some DC primarily, because that's what Sarah is, a DC collector. But there is some Marvel in here as well. I'm ready to share with you and unbox it after you come out of fast-forward mode. So by this haul, you can probably tell at the top we're going to have some treasuries to look at. And oh, do I love treasuries. We'll get to those in a moment. But first, let's get started with our haul. It's Brave and the Bold, Volume 1, Issue 100. It's Batman with four famous co-stars, Green Lantern, Black Canary, Robin, and Green Arrow. Absolutely love this. Let me tell you what happened to me a few years ago. This is probably three years ago, maybe, maybe four so I've talked about my friends who are twin brothers that both collect. And sometimes we go to comic book shows together and always have a great time. We always hunt for the other person, too. We went to this show, and the very first vendor we went to had some good stuff. But once again, it's the very first vendor I went to. I want to see what the entire show has to offer. My friend pulls out, and he says, here, here, you know, and he pulls out this book. And I'm like, oh, wow, that's cool. I didn't end up buying it because I wanted to go around and see what other vendors had what books to sell before, you know, I wasn't ready to pull the trigger. So then once I'd gotten through the con, I'm like, I'm going to go back and get that book. Well, I went back and the book was gone. I don't find out until later. My friend bought it. When I said, when I passed on it, he bought it. And I didn't know he instantly bought it. And he's like, oh my God, I'll sell it to you. And I'm like, no, 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 no. It's your book. But I've been wanting this book too. Um, I really enjoy Brave and the Bold, this definitely goes with my a Black Canary collection that I've been working on as well. We have a Nick Cardi cover in here. And plus this big anniversary story from issue 100, there also is a Dead Man story that's included in here too that uh, reprints Strange Adventures issue number 210. So this will be fun to dig into. And um, Sarah, this is in pretty good shape. I know, I know that you consider yourself like a a lower grade collector, but I'm more than happy with the condition that this is in. This is pretty awesome. Um, good way to kick off our Comic Book Editions Volume 201 video. Got some more Brave and the Bold. Oh, this is pretty nice. So Nick Cardi again. We're at 1971 right now. Uh, incidentally, issue 100 that I just showed was from 1972. This is 1971, a year prior, Brave and the Bold, issue number 94. So in my Comic Book Editions Volume 166 video, I completed Volume 1 of Teen Titans, the original Silver into Bronze Age run of Teen Titans. I completed it. 
oh, that felt so fantastic. But there still are some guest appearances that I'm looking for with the team. So that's what I'm trying to work on filling in right now. And obviously, this is a Brave and the Bold issue that I didn't have in my collection, nor have I ever read it. So I'm looking forward to reading that. This actually might even be my read tonight. I'm so psyched um, to have this one into the collection. So great cover. I think it's going to be a good story, and it's going to be fun to enjoy. So thank you, thank you, thank you. Incidentally, speaking of Silver Hair Bronze Age Babe, she recently hit a thousand subscribers on her YouTube channel. I mentioned this last week. I mentioned that last week on my Comic Book Editions Volume 200 video. But uh, congratulations again, Sarah. So well deserved. Um, love your channel. I I've said this many times, saying it again. You always leave me wanting more, which is the sign of a great channel. I mean it. Okay. This kind of comes full circle with Silver Hair, Bronze Age Babe and myself. I don't know if she even realized this. The very first time that she ever AOK'd me was Brave and the Bold, number 62. And she said, I just upgraded my copy so you can have my, my original copy, which I was happy to have, at least as a place filler. And I enjoyed it. I enjoyed the story a lot. But I was thinking, too, I'd kind of like to upgrade this at some point. Well, now she decided her upgrade... She just, you know, she wasn't enjoying as much, and she was putting it in the to-go pile. So now her upgrade has become my upgrade. Isn't that wild? And by the way, way back before I ever showed my face or anything, you can watch that AOK -OK unboxing in Comic Book Editions Volume 15 here in my video. We're at 201, and this is way back in Comic Book Editions Volume 15. So that's how long that, uh, that and longer, uh, Silver Hair, Bronze Age Babe and myself, go back as friends. I remember the first time I ever saw her on YouTube, she was a guest on a Superman theme show and she was so articulate and uh, that, that entire show was great uh, with all the panelists. But I was like, I, I wasn't familiar with her before then and that's how I discovered her channel and then happy enough to say now that we're friends. 1965 was the year that this comic book came out. Uh, Gardner Fox and Murphy Anderson, the creative team behind it, who were the original creative team behind the Justice League of America. You hear me talking about them a lot as I continue to buy a lot of JLA comic books. Of course, I mentioned just a few moments ago, too, this is perfect for my Black Canary collection. I also love that it's uh, Sportsmaster and the original Huntress that Starman and Black Canary are taking on. I love the original Huntress. Um, I think those are great characters. Um, they were used in the Stargirl TV show, too, which I thoroughly enjoyed that entire show. Um, happy to have a nicer little upgraded copy in here. And then it has a Wildcat story also included on here, too. This was a two-issue storyline that they did. A lot of people forget that some of the earlier Brave and the Bold's Batman wasn't the permanent star. I mean, it became a Batman team-up book shortly after this issue. But uh, they'd have different characters team up. Um, but as a matter of fact, issue 63, which I've had in my collection for a long time, is a Supergirl-Wonder Woman team-up which uh, I've always enjoyed them, and there's been a few of those throughout the years. So great to have another Brave and the Bold in my collection. That's, uh, that's, oh, I'm psyched about that. We're going to get into the treasuries for you now. Let's do, oh, let's do the Marvel ones. There's some DC treasuries too. We'll circle back to DC, but let's do, let's do the Marvel ones. So, first of all, I love treasuries because even if um, the stories are reprints inside, some treasuries, some of the later treasuries were original stories, but most of the earlier treasuries were reprints, like pretty much all of the ones that I'm going to share in today's video. But when they're in this big, larger size, it just feels like an event to me, regardless if it's an original story or a reprint. So there is this awesome Marvel Treasury number seven featuring the Avengers. This is a John Romita cover. No, this isn't John Romita. This is Jack Kirby. This is a Jack Kirby cover, and it uh, reprints Avengers number 52, which I have never read, so I'm looking forward to that. Avengers 57, the first appearance of Vision. I, ha I have read that a few times. I wish I owned an original of that. That would be amazing if I'm ever able to get that into my collection. Avengers 60, which I've read. That's the wedding of Janet Van Dyne and um, Hank Pym. And then what I'm really excited about Avengers 83, The Lady Lib Liberators. Uh, first appearance of Valkyrie, even though 
it isn't Barbara Norris Valkyrie, even though it looks exactly like Barbara Norris Valkyrie, but it's the first appearance of Valkyrie. So the Enchantress in disguise as Valkyrie, spoiler. I'm really excited to read that in this larger size format. And like I said, we got this great Jack Kirby cover. Um, pretty psyched about this. I believe this was 1975 when, when this collection came out. So uh, a lot of the treasures I have are DC ones, but I do have a couple Marvel, not as many as the DC, so it's nice to have another Marvel one to put into the collection. But I did not stop there. Giant superhero team up. This is awesome. And this is Marvel Treasury number nine from 1976 with a Gil Kane cover. And kind of what drew me to this one besides this amazing cover is the fact that the stories that are reprints are all heroes battling other heroes. And I don't know if I've read any of the stories that are actually reprinted inside of here. Because from Submariner issue number eight, it's Submariner taking on the thing. Then there's Daredevil issue 43, where he goes up against Captain America, which sounds like a really good battle. We have Journey into Mystery issue 112, Thor versus Hulk. He's my friend from work. That was a great line in the movie. And um, finally, Silver Surfer 14, that classic cover with Silver Surfer taking on Spider-Man. I don't think I've read any of those stories, and now I get to in this new Treasury uh, collection that's put together. Stoked about this. I, I was surprised this was actually left. I'm surprised all these books that I ended up scoring from Silver Hair, Bronze Age, Babe, were still left. By the way, this just happened. You know, I just did all of this last week with her. So keep checking into her channel to see if there's any books left or maybe anything that you're possibly looking for as well. So um, you never know. You could end up with an amazing deal like I did. Okay, here's a John Romita cover to share. So it's Spider-Man, the spectacular Spider-Man, Mar uh, Marvel Special Edition. I think this was the only book that they ever called Marvel Special Edition. It, it was just a one and done thing. The rest they call like Marvel Treasury or something to that effect. But um, Spider-Butt, it's amazing how many how much Spider-Butt you can find on the covers of different Spider-Man related comic books. Anyway, Amazing Spider-Man, uh, way back in the early Silver Age, uh, is reprinted in here. Issue number six is included in here. Then there's um, Amazing Spider-Man issue number 35, plus annual number one are all included in the reprint for this. So it looks like we've got the Sinister Six on the cover, a deluxe edition of Spidey's Greatest Foes. I think that's fun. Villain issues are always fun, if you ask me. Now we'll switch over to DC, a couple treasuries to share. By the way, if you're not subscribed to Silver Hair Bronze Age Babe, I left a link for her YouTube channel in the description for this video, so make sure to follow her and join the 1K subscribers and enjoy her awesome content. I would certainly would appreciate and consider it a personal favor if you're not subscribed already to do so. And I can't mention subscriptions without plugging my channel too. If for some odd reason you're here and not subscribed to my channel, first of all, welcome, but I hope you'll take this opportunity to subscribe to my channel too, because I'm trying to make it to the 1,000 mark. And uh, your help it would be awesome and uh, appreciated, for sure. So this treasure, we got an amazing um, Batman cover. Um, it's pretty cool. So this is Limited Collector's Edition, issue 44. We're in 1976 for the release of this, but it's all reprinted titles inside. We have Detective Comics, number 329, and issue 397 both reprinted inside, along with Batman Volume 1, issues 31 and 83. So that's a nice collection. I know I mentioned uh, 397 being reprinted in here. They're getting ready to do a facsimile of um, Detective Comics 400, the first appearance of Man Bat, which I'm excited about because I don't know if I've ever read the actual story. I don't think I have. Uh, but that book's pretty pricey. It's got an amazing cover. I'll probably get the foil version of that when it comes out in a few weeks. So 
looking forward to that and several of the um, facsimiles that DC has lined up in the future too. They're even doing some of the treasury facsimiles, which I think is awesome. Like Superman and Muhammad Ali, not only are they doing that as a treasury facsimile, they're doing it as a foil cover facsimile and they're doing a blank sketch cover. And that's the first treasury size one that they've done as a um, blank cover, which is tempting to pick up, very tempting. So uh, really drawn to this cover too, one of the reasons why I wanted to have it. And one more treasury to share today for you in this comic book editions video will come full circle as the first thing I showed you was something Superman in today's video and it will be the last. This is limited collector's edition C38, 1975 Superman. It's a Bob Oxner cover. And I am a huge fan of the Statue of Liberty. I've just noticed that I like Statue of Liberty related things. I have seen the Statue of Liberty with my own eyes from a distance. I have not had the chance to uh, see Lady Liberty up close, but I hope to someday. At least I can say I have seen her with my own eyes. Um, and that was, that was amazing. Uh, part of a, a very amazing trip that I had in New York City. A, a dream vacation, actually. So far, bucket list vacation. This one collects some Golden Age um, Superman stories in there. We have Superman number 40 and issue 48, both reprinted in here, along with Action Comics 315 and 316. The back cover of this is one of those diorama pieces that they used to do. And a lot of those treasuries kind of got destroyed because uh, the younger kids or collectors or, or owners at the time would rip that back cover off and make the 3D diorama project that looked like the front cover just kind of in 3D. So to get these without that back cover ripped off, you know, is always a, an extra bonus trade. I'm actually surprised that these treasuries don't sell for more. I think it's the fact that they were hard to store. There weren't bags and boards for this type of stuff back when they were original releases. So the condition on these to find in higher grade is always tough. But no matter what grade it is, I love my treasuries. As I love my friend Sarah, silver haired, bronze age babe. Thank you so much for this super a-OK. What did you think of it? Now is the time for you to sound off in the comments below. Your comments are welcomed, encouraged, and appreciated. Give this video a thumbs up, a like, a heart. That's another great way to show support to my channel. The algorithm loves it when you do that, too. I dropped my back issue of the week, YouTube Short, yesterday. And are you watching the TV show The Boys? I'm watching it. I don't know if I can ever look at German chocolate cake the same way again after watching this season. But... A boys-themed back issue of the week short is up on my channel now. 60 seconds, if you want to check that out. I'll have Fanboys Live and the Retro Review coming up with Comic Food 2014 and Signature King. This Sunday night, the greatest DC comic show on YouTube, 8.15 p.m. Eastern, 7.15 p.m. Central, Sunday night here on my YouTube channel. And I don't want to forget, even though it, it's passed already, um... Last week, I did another episode of Avengers vs. JLA. It was episode two with John's Comics with Kids. That was on his YouTube channel, and we had a great time. I always have an awesome time hanging out with John, too. But if you missed that, that is archived in a playlist folder here on my channel as well. It's a monthly show that we do where we kind of pit the Justice League of America comic books up against the Avengers and see which one wins. So that was fun, too. Thanks again for checking out today's Comic Book of Editions Volume 201 video. Next week for 202, we're going to keep the AOK -OK theme going. I have an AOK -OK unboxing from my friend Glenn, Seeking Superman. Look, it just all kind of comes back to kal -El. So look for that next week on my channel. Until the chance we get to visit again, have a healthy, safe, happy, fun, and successful week. And I look forward to visiting with you again soon. Take care.